was feeling fine, and the morning progressed and my voice started going. So we can do this a couple of ways. Uh, we can go until my voice dies. We may go for a half hour or so, maybe a little longer, we'll see. But then I look out, and there's two retired ministers and there's three lay preachers here. So uh, we could be going until four. So uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Let us take a moment to quiet ourselves and to settle that fear and anxiety now of not knowing what the rest of the day is going to bring as we prepare for worship. and God, we have been graced with wisdom and knowledge. We are not lacking in any spiritual gift. We are continually encouraged and strengthened, called as partners in Christ's mission of love and service to the world. We gather in hope. We worship with the Spirit at play in our hearts. all, holding back nothing for the sake of a fuller, wider expressions of love, move us this day to take similar risks. Grace us with renewed confidence, inspire us with an inviting, touchable vision for life, work, and service in your name. Amen. Our first hymn today is number 415, God, we praise you for the morning, 415.
Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, 1 to 10. And you can follow along in your pew Bible at page 215. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Here ends our reading. Our reading from the Psalms today comes from Psalm 139. It will be found on page 861 in Voices United. 861. You have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You discern my path and the places I rest. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it, O oh God, completely. You guard me from behind and before and lay your hand upon me. It is beyond my knowledge. It is a mystery. Where can I escape from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I lie down in the grave, you are even there. If I take wing with the dawn and alight at the sea's furthest limits, there also your hand will be guiding me, your powerful hand holding me fast. If I say, let the darkness cover me and my day be turned to night, even darkness is not dark to you. It was you who formed my inward parts. You fashioned me in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wondrous are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being fashioned in secret, intricately woven in the mystery of clay. Your eyes saw my substance taking shape. In your book, my every day was recorded. All my days were fashioned. your designs are to me, O God. How great their number. I try to count them, but they are more than the sand. I come to the end, but I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. 
Watch closely, lest I follow a path of error. Our next hymn is number 296. This is God's Wondrous World, 296. listen when Diane was reading that story about Samuel? Do you know how old Samuel was at the time? I don't either. Well, I think he was only a young fella. He was only young. He wasn't that much older than you guys. If he was older than you guys, I would say he's probably close to your age. Three? He may have been more than three. But maybe four, maybe four, maybe four. I think you nailed it. Uh, you know what? What was special about that story is that whether he was four or whether he was five or six or seven or eight, we don't know, but God called him to do something. And that's what the whole point of the story is, that God called him to do something at your age. Do you think that God would call you to do something? Yeah? What do you think God would call you to do? You're four? Yeah? What would you think God would call you to do at four? What could you do that's important? What? What are you good at? I I could do like a flip or something. A flip or something? That's a good thing to be called to do. What are you good at, Maddox? What are you good at? Michael, what are you good at? Yeah, what would God call you to do? Yeah? That's a good thing. You know what? I want to tell you a story. This is a true story. 
a true story. Before I came to this church, okay, which is before you guys were born, before I came to this church, there were two church services. There was one at 9 o'clock, and there was one at 11 o'clock, okay? And the one at 9 o'clock didn't have many people going to it, and it was, more, it was more contemplative, it was more quiet, it was more people sat and they listened. And the one at 11 o'clock was a little bit noisier, okay? And when I came here, they combined those two services, the 9 o'clock service and the 11 o'clock service, and they decided to have a 10 o'clock service, just one in the morning, and that way nobody was happy. Okay? And we've done that for the last 20 years. Last 20 years. But when I first came here, when we started that, there was one woman who was uh, talked to me, or I was talking to, and she told me that she misses the 9 o'clock service because she finds at the 10 o'clock service, it, there's a little bit more noise. The kids are running around a little bit. It's a little bit more distracting. And she just wasn't getting out of the service what she got out of it before. And she didn't know what to do. And I left it at that. And then summer hit. And we all know what happens at summertime. Everybody leaves. Summer came back. Summer is your sister's birthday. Summer came back, or summer ended, and people started coming back, and I had a conversation with that same woman. And you know what she said to me? She said that, I am so glad that it's September. It ended. I am so glad that summer is over and the kids are coming back and the church feels alive again. Okay, something happened to her in that year that she changed her whole perspective on what church was and what was meaningful in church for her. And she could only do that by having a bunch of people like you, your age, a bunch of kids your age, changing that for her. So that's how important you are. Did you know everything you see all, like four? Four? Yeah. Do you see all, these, see all these old people over here? They're older than four. They don't even remember four. You are so important that you change their hearts just by being you. Just by being you. Can you go join with me in the Lord's Prayer? Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as she is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you very much. I think you guys are going down to Sunday school now, and we'll see you later. Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John, reading at chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, 
you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends our reading. of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, our Redeemer. Amen. Our readings today are talking about a call and following the call of God. It's interesting, Samuel didn't recognize that call of God. Three times God called and he thought it was Eli and he ran to uh, Eli for help and Eli recognized it. There was some wisdom with being older, I guess. Or, you know, he wasn't calling and he believed Samuel was hearing something and he put two and two together. A call of God to Samuel. He said, listen and answer. I think about us. How many times do we hear a call and we don't even recognize it? We don't even recognize it. God's calling us to do something. Most times we don't want to hear it. Most times we fight against it. But we don't uh, even recognize it at times. That listening to God, that practice of listening to God and what God would have us do and where God would have us be and how God would lead us and how we would follow. I know I think of people who change careers, change careers, they're in a job, they thought they would like that job, they're in that job and they follow that job and they live that job and they work that job and in the middle of it they realize they're not that happy with it and they want to change and they go into something drastically different 
drastically different. I was telling you a few weeks ago about my niece, who was uh, trained as an engineer, an environmental engineer, and now was going into uh, changing her career and going to become a physiotherapist. No similarities between those two. How do you do that? How do you do that? Even if you are in a position you're not happy, how do you make that jump? Wasn't that the whole point of, of uh, Archie Bunker? He was just miserable in every aspect of his life, but he did not do anything to change it. He just stayed in it. How do we do that? How do we listen? How do we know when it's time? How do we overcome that fear of change and do something drastically different? Different. You know, with Buddy Peach, we had Buddy's funeral yesterday, or Friday. It's funeral Friday. And one of the things I said about Buddy is he just did what he wanted to do. And all he wanted to do was serve people. All he wanted to do was make people happy. He didn't do anything that because society says this is the stuff you have to do. He did what made his heart feel good. He was the opposite of Archie Bunker. Happy every day of his life. How do we do that? What is it? What clicks sometimes? What clicks sometimes and makes us want to change? Clicks sometimes and makes us want to, to listen in a different way, to understand the world in a different way. How many times have you sat down and thought to yourself, when I was younger, and we were all younger, no matter what age you were, was I ever stupid? And I don't even understand how I could think the way I thought. How could I have even thought that or believed that? Something happened, something changed, and we were receptive to that change, and we evolved, like that lady that I was talking about with the kids. Something happened, she changed, and she moved in a different direction. In a different direction. How many times do we think that? So those things that we thought that we can't understand how we even thought them in the first place, can you think about what happened to change those thoughts? To change those? Some of them are drastic. Some of them are, are easy to see. I have a friend who was very homophobic until his, one of his children became transgendered, and now he's not homophobic anymore. Now he has a different understanding because he has a place to put that. That part of his life changed drastically, <coughs> almost instantly. I also know people who had come out to their parents, and their parents sent them away. Didn't have anything to do with them again. How sad is that for everybody? So what's the difference? What happens in one head that doesn't happen in another? That clicks. That clicks. Why did I think this way? And what's going to make a change? And am I open to that change? Am I receptive to that change? Because you have to be receptive to it in order for it to happen. So what are the things that were stupid that you thought? And everyone's looking around. I say, I hope, I don't. I hope he's not asking me to say that out loud. Because <laughs> all of you did. All of you were stupid. Oh, that feels good to say from a pulpit. <laughs> and you learned. And you changed. And you evolved. Evolved. You've done it. You've done it. Congratulations. Now, Right now, 
in the beliefs and in the things that you hold as important, what's stupid? Because there is. What's stupid? And how do we sit down and try to imagine what that is so we can even begin to change it, so we can even understand that it needs to change, so that we can evolve into something different again? Again. What's holding us back? Stopping us from moving forward? What are we scared of? What causes us anxiety? Why is it more comfortable to be like this than to be something new? That's God's call. And it doesn't happen when we're a kid in a temple. It happens every day of our life. Where's God calling us? How am I listening to that call? How can I hear that call? How can I respond to that call? And those are two different things, to hear it first of all and then respond to it. And what's the help and what's the support that I need in order to follow that call? That's why community is so important. That's why our friends and family relationships are so important. Because nurturing needs to happen in order for that to, to change. You don't put a seed in a pot and leave it. You put a seed in a pot and you feed it. And you water it. And you stick it in the sun. And you let it thrive. Where is God calling us? Amen. Number 509, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, 509.
Let us pray. Beloved God, we praise you for your word that creates worlds, your breath that brings forth life, your voice that inspires oceans and rivers. You are the source of all life. Every creature, great and small, is made by you and loved by you. In the beginning, you proclaimed all of your creation to be good, and human beings you declared very good. Yet too many do not know that. We pray this day for all of those, your children, who do not know their goodness, their worth, their value, who do not know that they are loved unconditionally by the one who created them. We pray that we might never forget our own worth and value as your beloved children. We give thanks that in Jesus, your living word, you call us to discipleship and new life. Help us as Christ's disciples through words of compassion and cries for justice, through gentle smiles and hugs and arms that reach out to break down barriers. Proclaim the truth that all your children are valued and loved. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I'd like to direct your attention to the announcements found in your bulletin. Sympathy of the congregation is extended to Rob Peach and Karen Duntramont and their family on the recent passing of their dad, Buddy. We hold them in our hearts and in our prayers. Grateful acknowledge the memorials to the local fund in memory of Buddy from Dave and Linda MacGyver, to the Sunday School Fund in memory of Buddy from Linda and Sharon Pollock, and to more voices, hymn books in memory of Buddy from Brian and Carolyn Aikens and Margaret Eisner. And thank you for the, remembering our family in that way. The bulletins today have been generously donated in memory of my mother Pearl and Father John and Brother Johnny by Roger Burns. Thank you, Roger. Just a reminder, uh, annual reports are due tomorrow. Any of you who are responsible for that, please uh, abide by that so that they can be printed and put into uh, book form. Coming week, the Stewardship Committee is meeting Wednesday, January 17th at 9 o'clock in the morning, not in the evening, in the Reverend Ray Purchase Room. And session committees are meeting Thursday, January 18th at 7 o'clock with session to follow at 7.30. So please keep that in mind. Uh, the, as I mentioned last week, the Jane Paul Indigenous Women's Resource Center downtown uh, is looking for some help. Uh, they deal with, uh, with women and families uh, of diverse backgrounds. They're looking to have a uh, meal program for people, and they're looking for volunteers who would like to maybe once a month uh, prepare a, uh, a stew or a casserole to bring down for them to distribute to the, uh, to the people that are coming through their doors. If that's something, a place that you're being called, if that's a way that you feel you can help, uh, please contact the office and, and let us know. Week of Prayer for Christian Unity is coming up uh, the week of January 15th to 19th. Um, it's going to be at St. Margaret Bourgeois Roman Catholic Church uh, from 12.10 to 1 p.m. This is co-sponsored and led by representatives from all Christian churches. And we ask people to bring their own lunch and everyone is welcome. Let us continue to worship God with the presentation of our offering.
gifts to you, God. Here is the work of our hands, and here is the love of our hearts. Accept them and use them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, we've got a meeting scheduled for the Elizabeth Pierce Guild tomorrow, but I understand that they met yesterday and they de-decorated the church. Is de-decorated a word, or is it one now? It's one now. Oh, but de-decorated is better. Better. And then it's an original. It's an original. So that meeting tomorrow is canceled. Let us continue singing our final hymns, 567, Will You Come and Follow Me, 567. as a river of life. May we drink deeply of her wisdom. May we never thirst again. May we go through life refreshing many as a sign of healing for all. Through the one who is life eternal. Amen.